example, you also need to understand that most of the problems are very complex if you just go deep enough in them, right? So I don't know if you talked about it, but the learning tree, do you want to go yes. quickly through it? There's seven sure. steps that are written down here, so. Yeah, I mean, I, I'll, I'll spare you all the details yeah. of the seven steps here, but the idea is just to try to define the tree before going there. Um, so trying to map out what does this knowledge look like if you have to go from first principles, if you will, right? What is the fundamental part? How does it branch out? Yeah. Um, a good example is if you want to do investing in shares, for example. The first branching habit is do you want to be more speculative or do you want to be more fundamental? If you're speculative, there are different ways of doing that, right? You can go with the trends, you can go with the counter trends, etc. Et or momentum, if you will. On the fundamental side, like growth, your value investing, etc. Right? So you can start to build it up. What I like about going on that kind of route is it allows you to be very cognizant about the areas that you do not know anything about. And if, for me, at least, one of the big challenges I have is always, do I know enough? Right? Do I know enough to make the right decision? I'm always paranoid that someone in the market has a knowledge advantage on mm -hmm. me. And one thing, I mean, let's take AdWords, for example. I had the great pleasure and I was very fortunate to have a fantastic mentor in that guy called Florian Heinemann, who's the former CMO and then co-founder of Zalando and Rocket, etc. Um, the grand old man of online marketing, would dare to say. What happened with him is I got an opportunity to learn a lot, but I always had this inner fear that there was something that I did not learn. Not because he wasn't capable of, because he clearly was, but just because there was a nuance or a detail that I didn't get. Yeah. So I like to structure these things so I always know what are the building blocks. I like to speak to other people who understand the topics better than me and figure out what have I missed here. So always trying to, again, going back to Ray Dalio, a great guy, and saying, look, how do I know that I'm right? How do I know that that's not something missing? So I validate that I have all of the parts, yeah. and then I can dig down into each of them. And then, of course, you can go deeper and say, within this part, do I have all of them, right? Yeah. Um, but that's super important because maybe a good analogy could be that, let's say if you're super good at math, but even though if you make a tiny, tiny mistake in a long equation or whatever, your answer will be totally wrong. Correct. And you can kind of use that example, for instance, team marketing. If you miss a small piece, that can actually damage you further along the line. So that's why maybe it's a good thing to be super paranoid that do I have the whole picture with me? Because if there's a piece missing, I can really go the completely wrong direction, right? Sure. I use an example, I think we used it in the article as well, about emotional intelligence, right? I appreciate that's a debate about whether or not that's an actual field, but for, for a second, just accepting that that's a field. If you break that one down, most people think of emotional intelligence as something that's between you and I, something that's between people, right? But if you look at most of the literature within the field, in reality, it comes more down to, first of all, understanding yourself. So first of all, I mean, there, there are two tracks, right? There's the emotions of others and there's the emotions of yourself. And with yourself, it starts like emotional awareness. That's just the first step. And the second then is emotional management, if you will. Are you able to restrain yourself when you get angry? Are you able to understand yourself when you get sad? Those kind of things. If you look at the sort of the other part, you have the first part, which is around recognizing feelings in others. And then there's the relationship management, which is then engaging with it and, and sort of managing that part. What is interesting here is most people think of emotional intelligence as being the second arm. Mm -hmm. so it's about what am I seeing in other people. But in reality, what you realize is that you cannot do that if you cannot recognize the emotion from yourself. It's impossible to see what's the difference between being sad or angry and those kind of things if you can't recognize yourself. And of course, there are the, sort of the main, what is it, four or five different emotions people have. But there are so many nuances of those, and unless you really recognize them in yourself, or at least intellectually, it's very hard to uh, to see them in others. So, so that's a, for me is a great example yeah. because people would dig straight down into being better at relationships instead of thinking about emotional intelligence. Whereas in reality, you're completely missing the first principles, right? Exactly. And very few people would see that. That's it.